no distraction in any way or form. Women, men, money, wealth, popularity, fame, position, power, nothing of all those will distract us in Jesus' name. We run the race also with the scripture as our companion. We run with a companion in the scripture because the time in which we live is such a time that requires you and me being serious with our Bible. It's such a time that if care is not taken, even the very elect will be deceived and be swept away. We run with the Bible. In times like this, you need your Bible. And I pray that the enemy will not take the Bible away from us in Jesus' name. This is a time that people have twisting the Bible up and down and they're applying it in their own way and turning it to sweet themselves. But when you know the word of God told it to show thyself and prove them to God, a what man that needed not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth, thy word have I hid in my heart, that I might not sin against thee, and the Lord will give us the understanding of the world in Jesus' name. We run the race with the great commission, the great commission, the great commission, understand that the more you preach to others, you are preaching to yourself, to yourself. Maybe I should ask you, because this is what I personally feel myself, the more I tell people don't do this, the more I tell people don't do that, uh, I, I, I realize that I'm telling myself the same thing first of all. How about you? When you are preaching to people, the first person you are really preaching to is who? It's yourself. It's yourself. So listen to this. The more you allow compromise in the life of other people is an indication that you are compromising yourself. The more that you are not serious and decisive in dealing with issues of sin in the life of others is an indication that you are not working with God, that you are a liar, that you have the form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. But the more you charge somebody, don't say, you know, you stay away from tampering with anything that does not belong unto you. The more you tell people, don't tell a lie, the more you know that if you lie, a greater judgment will come upon you. You, don't, you know, you tell people, you can dress worldly, love not the world, neither the things that in the world. If any man loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. Then you know yourself that you need to comport yourself and position yourself in such a way that you are acceptable not just unto man but unto the God of heaven. And so, you run with the great commission for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believe in him should not perish but have everlasting life. How can you be telling people to escape the danger of the world and you are running into that danger? You know what I have discovered? When anybody say I am saved, I am born again and they are not preaching the gospel anywhere and everywhere is an indication they are not ready for heaven. One of the signs of a true believer is the preaching of the gospel. Go ye therefore into all the world and preach the gospel. Baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them all things whatsoever I have commanded you, and lo, I am with you always until the end of the world. The Lord will be with you. The Lord will walk with you. The Lord will sustain you. The Lord will support you. The Lord will strengthen you in Jesus' name. Let us be men and women of the world without fear of anybody. Man can only kill the body. They cannot kill your soul. And if you die suddenly, it hastens you up to glory. And what exactly are we really enjoying in the world? What is it that we're enjoying? That we don't want to go. If we really believe heaven, you fear no man, you fear no one. You will stand for God, stand with God, and declare the total counsel of the Lord. And that is why, as we go about preaching the gospel, we run the race also with confidence. You run with confidence. Paul said, for I am persuaded. Are you persuaded within you? He said, I know whom I have believed. Do you know whom you have believed? When there is problem coming, do you know your God is there? When there are oppositions and challenges, do you have that confidence that if God be with you, nobody can be against you? The Lord will keep us in Jesus' name. So then, you run with the word of comfort. 
run the race with the word of comfort. A lot of challenges are out there, but you know, Jesus said, in the world, you will have what? Tribulation. But in the Lord, what will you have? There is peace for you in Christ Jesus. In the midst of the storms of life, there is peace for you. And if there is sickness, there is a promise of healing for you. If there is any affliction, there is promise of deliverance for you. If there is anything you are going through, remember, 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 at the end of it, you will make it to glory. The Bible says, comfort ye one another with this saying, the joy of the Father that our time is limited here on earth, but unlimited in heaven. And when we get over there, it's going to be eternity with God. That is enough to give us the comfort. And then you run the race with clear vision. Clear vision. Clear vision. You know what you are doing. You know why you are doing what you are doing. And you stay, you stand your ground. No matter what happens, you run the race with the commandments of the Lord. Not the commandments of man. And that is why when the apostles were told to stop mentioning the name of Jesus, uh, uh, they, they said unto the people, judge yourself. Do we obey man rather than God? And so they were obedient to the instructions and the commandments of the Lord in everything that they were doing. And if we are going to win this race we are talking about, then we run the race without compromise. You don't compromise with yourself. We don't, you don't compromise with your wife. You don't compromise with your husband. You don't compromise with your pastor. You don't compromise with your church member. You compromise with nobody. You compromise with no employer, no employee in any way. You compromise with no government. After all, after all, at the end of it, you are the one that will stand before the judgment throne of God to give account for your life. All these other people will not be there with you. Your time together is just for a short period of time. You have your children, and your children will not want you to do the will of God. It's a matter of time. Your son will leave you. Your daughter will leave you. And then it will remain you. What then will you speak of God? Your wife eventually, yes, whatever God has joined together, let no man put asunder. But a day will come, something will put asunder. Death will put asunder. When your husband dies or your wife dies, what becomes of you? What becomes of you? That is why you let uh, we say, let others see Jesus in you. So run the race without compromise. We run the race without covetousness. A lot of ministers today are covetous. They are in their ministry for what they will eat and what they will drink. Not because of heaven. That's why you have to be careful of who you are listening to and how you are listening to them. What are they talking about? What is their goal? What is their focus? Covetousness has taken over the church today. You also want to run the race without complaining. Complaining complaining. Listen to this. No matter where you go in life, you'll get what you're looking for. If you're looking for an excuse, you'll find an excuse. You are looking for a problem, you find a problem. You are looking for somebody who is not perfect, you'll find somebody who is not perfect. Forget complaining. Be ready for heaven. I said be ready for heaven. I said be ready for heaven. And the Lord will keep us in Jesus' name. Now, as we talk about running the Christian race, what is the opposite of courage? Discouragement. If you put that in another way, what, what do you call it? It is fear. It is fear. Fear and discouragement, they are doing. That works together. Why is it that some people that started well are backing out of the race. Why is it that some that were excited are about serving the Lord, following the Lord, are no more in the faith? Why is it that those that were running before are now standing? Why is it that those that were, that were running before are now sitting and no longer concerned about the things of God? I will show us a few things. Right now, about the causes of fear and the discouragement that hinders courageous running. 
that hinders courageous courage. The causes of fear and discouragement. Some people, when you look at them, it is sin and disobedience unto God. Sin and disobedience. Let's look at Genesis chapter 3, verse 10. We see the case of Adam there. And then in verse 10, and he said, I heard thy voice in the garden, and I was, what's the next word? I was afraid because I was naked and I hid myself. Transgression brings fear. Sin brings fear. The same person you have been free to go to before, now you cannot go freely anymore because of fear. What brought that fear? Sin brought the fear. The person you have been free to call and communicate with easily, now you can't do that because something wrong had taken place. The Lord himself will help us in Jesus' name. Fear, uh, 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 dis dis disobedience is one thing. Another thing is disappointment. You have an expectation, and those expectations are not met. Then you are discouraged. And then you the fear of will I succeed? Will I make it? Is there? And then you want to begin to cut corner. You will not cut corners in Jesus' name. At other times, some people are deceived. And because of deception, they are deterred. They are turned away from the path of life, the path of righteousness, the path of holiness, the path of uprightness. And then you see yourself, you want to get married, and the enemy is deceiving you. Well, in this church, look around how many men are in the church. One, two, three. And how many women are in the church? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Three men to ten women. And this church, uh, they don't allow polygamy. What is my chance of getting married? I think I need to begin to look outward. It doesn't work that way. God will give you your own spouse. If it means for God to import the man for you, for your sake, your own will call, how, how wonderful will it be if your husband is important? Somebody say amen. That means it's, it's brand new. It's different from all the common ones. Why don't you say, Lord, I don't care who is here and who is not here. I want the best from you and you get the best from God in Jesus' name. But you know the devil wants to deceive you and tell you, well, uh, why don't you begin to compromise, dress like this, dress like that, change your style, uh, uh, walk like this, uh, so that the people out there will know that, yeah, even though you go to deeper life, but uh, uh, your body is there, deeper life, but your mind is out there in Sodom. You will not be a bastard in Jesus' name. Stand your ground in the Lord. Stay with us. Don't allow yourself to be deceived. Or you are in a business and the enemy is telling you, well, in America, even though they say no bribing, but uh, uh, they know the way they do it. And then how they get the business. You know how you cut corner. You know how you give this gift and give that, uh, that gift. And you know you are bribing and you are corrupting yourself. Man may not see, man may not know you have been deceived. If you die in that situation, you will miss heaven. No matter what you have done in the past, deceit will bring fear. And then many a times, a lot of us, when we have done things that are wrong, falling into the deceit, the seat, the seat of the enemy, and then we go to God in prayer. You know what I have discovered in life? When you are not standing right with God, you cannot stand right in prayer. When you're not standing right with God, you cannot speak with authority and with confidence. Instead of you going in prayer and taking authority, you go in prayer and pleading and apologizing every day of your life. You make yourself a servant of sin. A servant of sin. The Lord will deliver in Jesus' name. So, deceit is another thing. The other, at other time, is disease. Some people, because of sickness, because of infirmity that will not go on time. They think, well, I need to seek for help somewhere else. I knew of somebody. 
that was coming to our church. And then it turned out she was sick. And uh, they prayed and nothing seemed to have happened. And later on, before I knew it, I was told they took her to somewhere. And with further inquiry, it was an happily place they took her to. To go and get some care. If you get to a point in your life that your God cannot do it, it's a terrible state. And yet, God will allow some things in life to bring out the things that are on the inside of you. If you're a proud person, God will allow some things to bring that pride out. If you're a worldly person, God will allow some things to bring that, uh, uh, that out. If you're not stable with the Lord, God will allow some things to really test and prove you. To cut a long story short, she died before the shrine. She died and went to her fire. I knew of another man that gave his life to Christ and this one I actually worked with him and uh, it wasn't of deeper life but eventually came to deeper life. Everything turned around by the grace of God. Eventually he felt sick and then people were suggesting to him go here and go there and he said no I am a child of God. My God is able even if God chooses not to heal me now, I will not compromise at this last stage of my life. Eventually, he died and he went to glory and I rejoice in the Lord. I pray that your last lap will not be a disaster in Jesus' name. So, disease, and it can be any kind of disease. You know, at other times, it is division in the church. And you don't know, some things happen. You don't understand that sometimes the wind blows. And the storm rages. And when the wind is blowing the forest, all the trees, both the tall and the short one, everything blows like this, blows like this. Now understand, the wind is blowing, not because of the healthy trees, but because of the unhealthy ones. So that all the unhealthy branches and the limbs and all the unhealthy leaves and that are dry can fall off. You will not fall off in Jesus' name. And then you say, if there can be a division in a church like ours that preaches holiness, there is no division anywhere. I hope you understand. I'm just telling you what happens in different places. Uh, uh, maybe there might have been in the past. I don't know of any right now. So I'm just preaching. And then, you know, say, well, in a church like this, if there could be this kind of division, I don't think I want to stay. Hey, listen, except you remain in the act, you will not be saved. If that can happen in a church that preaches holiness, righteousness, and purity, what then do you think you are going to get out there? What do you think you will get out there? And that is why sometimes some people that think I can stand alone, I can stand by myself, they bolt out of the church. When they get out there and then they test the grounds, they realize that what they thought is bad here is greater, mightier than what is out there. Those of them that have the fear of God, those of them that are determined for heaven, those of them that are humble and really want to make it to the end, they put ego aside, they put aside what man will say, they come back to the church and they say, we are back. 